I keep getting the same questions fired in by email, so here's a quick FAQ to try and stem the tide. Dear Steve, uh, when are you going to review the Nokia N97 and N86, and what's happened to the promised Samsung Omni HD review? Well, the N86 is due here next week, so it'll definitely make Phone Show 78. The N97 is due here for trying out mid-April, and the Omni HD trial has been delayed a couple of weeks, but I'll bring you my hands-on with this in Show 78 or 79, so relax. Dear Steve, where can I get free phones like you? Uh, I usually only get short-term loans, trust me, I have to give most devices back in pretty short order. If you run a popular blog or site though, there's no reason why you can't ask for a short-term loan too. Just see the appropriate manufacturer's PR department and ask nicely. Dear Steve, why do you film everything at home and on a phone? Well, I film on a phone because I'm demonstrating how far phone shot video has come, at least if you choose the right devices. A bit of a crusade, I know, but hey. Uh, I film a lot at home and in my car because they're two of the quietest places for recording that I know. And I'd like you not to have to put up with trade show crowd noise, wind, aircraft overhead, office fans, chatter and so on. And also because I don't have a big budget or an expense account. Dear Steve, why don't you feature more Windows Mobile and Android powered phones? Android? Android? There's only one phone so far and it's hardware is out of rubbish. Uh, we'll see more from this as the year goes on, no doubt. Windows Mobile got some serious coverage a few shows back, admittedly mainly negative. Microsoft just haven't got a clue here. When asked last week why Windows Mobile was so far behind the competition, Steve Ballmer said in front of all his customers, there are opportunities here for us to accelerate our execution in this area. Which says it all, really. Dear Steve, which phone should I buy? Ah, oh, this old chestnut again. See my features on this in recent shows, but if pushed from the currently available phones, I'd say to buy either a Nokia 5800, a Sony Ericsson C905, a Nokia N95 8 gig, or an Apple iPhone 3G, all for different reasons. Dear Steve, how can I send you feedback on the phone show? Okay, so I made this question up. <laughs> Email me here, or if you want to comment on a particular show, uh, use the comments thread on my YouTube channel URL shown here. When the idea of mobile TV on phones was first broached around three years ago with the ill-fated Nokia N92, the plan was that DVB-H became a broadcast standard. All phones would one day have dataless, full quality access to TV on the move. And then the real world intervened. Multiple broadcast standards, significant costs needed for setting up the appropriate transmitters, all scared off the networks, and so on. Meanwhile, mobile data rates continued to rise, with 3.5G speeds now quite sufficient for handling internet broadcast video streams. If you're not in a city, then you'll be struggling, of course, but hey, there's always Wi-Fi. DVB-H isn't totally dead in the water yet, but uh, after year after year of delays, I've stopped holding my breath. What I wanted to do here was demo some of the ways in which I watch TV and video content for free on my Nokia 5800 and Apple iPhone, two of the hottest selling widescreen smartphones in the world. Hopefully you'll be inspired to try out one of these applications or techniques yourself. Live TV first. We've had operator-specific data-driven TV channels for quite a while, but these are always tied into the operator in such a way that you have to dip into your pocket to watch. We're just starting to see live TV available online for mobiles for free. Witness France 24, France 24, seen here, broadcasting in French, English and Arabic. Plus, from what I can gather, CBS Mobile over in the USA. Living in the UK, I'm also very lucky to be able to access the mobile TV phenomenon of recent times, BBC iPlayer, with virtually all the BBC's high quality content available on demand, streamed and, at least in this Nokia 5800's case, downloadable for watching offline. In practice, this is a hugely flexible way to watch the very best in TV content without ever being tied to remembering to watch something important live. On top of these services, making the maximum use of the great screen on the iPhone and the insanely good speakers on the Nokia 5800, there are quite literally hundreds of good video podcasts from Cranky Geeks, shown here, to Rocket Boom, shown here, to um, the phone show itself. Ah, yes. Uh, on the iPhone, subscribe to video podcasts in the mobile iTunes store. On an S60 phone, just use the supplied podcasting client. Then there's the huge, vast repository of video that is YouTube. Fancy watching some music videos or just typing in a favourite subject and seeing what comes up. 
use the YouTube client on the iPhone or on some Windows mobile phones, or simply watch the full desktop videos inside web on S60 phones like the 5800. Note, some of the items just mentioned, that's France 24, iPlayer streaming and YouTube, are heavily dependent on a real-time fast internet connection. If you're at home or in the office, you'll be able to hook all into all this content by Wi-Fi. Otherwise, you'd better have 3.5G data and a flat rate tariff set up, just warning you. TV on your phone may not be going down the DVB-H route just yet, but there are certainly lots of options to think about. So we're starting off with iDrum Rock Edition. Let's switch to a different drum pattern. And you can hear there are basic guitar and bass and even keyboard instruments in there as well. If we drive down, as it were, into the individual bars, you get up to 16 bars in a loop, and then we can drill down again within each bar to see the, the operation of each instrument in each bar, and then we can drill down again to see what each instrument is doing in terms of playing on the 16th of the bar, the quarter beats. And from there you can drill down, drill down even to change the instruments between different percussion instruments, or different melodic instruments. Very, very, very slick indeed, and as you can hear, pretty good output. Great for practicing too, or even backing you on stage maybe. This is iDrum Rock Edition. Then we come to Bloom. This is what's called a generative instrument. It generates music itself based on your inputs. So you have an ambient pad, which gradually changes. Notes which you input in an analog fashion by creating patterns on the screen, these notes are then repeated for a time and they gradually die away. So you can build up your own ambient masterpiece. Very, very cool. I'm not sure it's got a practical use, but it was created by Brian Eno, the guy behind Roxy Music and various other masterpieces. So, Bloom. So this is Gig Baby, a combination drum machine and multi-track recording studio. Up to a couple of dozen basic rhythms, and then you can record using the iPhone's microphone up to four tracks of vocals or instruments. Perhaps record a brief demo. You can record a whole handful of tracks and your own names, your settings, your preferred rhythms, and of course you can choose the rhythms themselves. Let's pick a rock rhythm. Nice and standard, nice and steady. This is Gig Baby. And this is Guitarist, perhaps uh, more a novelty than anything else, despite the presence of a built-in recording system and an effects box. <laughs> Still pretty cool, Guitarist. So this is Band, um, one of the very first applications in the iPhone App Store. A bit of a novelty, but you can do quite a bit with it. There's a, first of all, a programmable drum machine. There's a set of drum kits, and so on. You can record each of these, by the way, then layer on the next instrument until you build up a demo. There's a bass guitar. You get a, a keyboard. You get some a funky blues guitar. And you can do practice your solos. And you get an audience to cheer at the end. Thank you, thank you very much, thank you. Thank you. You may recall I've been struggling for a couple of years now, ever since I started the smartphone show, which became the phone show, uh, to handle phone shot MP4 video. This is being shot on the Nokia N82, for example. To handle that without audio sync issues and to do full screen video cutaways and to do pan and zoom when using picture overlays. Nothing seemed to do the trick. I've tried four different video editors on the PC and three on the Mac. Nothing fit the bill uh, without any issues whatsoever. Until now, um, Phone Show 76 and this Show 77 have been put together using Apple's brand new iMovie 09 on Mac and I have to say it's stonkingly good. It's very intuitive, it maintains as much quality as possible of the original phone shot video. There are no sync issues. I can do full screen video or picture cutaways and there's full control over cropping, panning and zooming. I'm very impressed. And no, this isn't an advert and they didn't pay me to say this. 
When the N97 was announced at Nokia World, it was still very early days and the software wasn't very mature. At MWC, you got a much better idea of the widgets that would be on display. Here we can see some of them from Bloomberg, Facebook and AccuWeather. Others, not shown here, include LinkedIn and MySpace, and there's likely to be a significant collection of widgets by the time the N97 launches later this year. The widgets on the home screen generally open into a full application. Here, for example, is the Facebook widget showing its inbox view. Widgets can also take advantage of on-phone features. Here's the Facebook widget which can be used to upload a picture either directly from the camera or from the gallery. The N97's home screen widgets are an essential part of the device's experience and go a long way to improving the overall usability and interaction with web services. The second thing I wanted to note was the implementation of kinetic scrolling, also known as flick scrolling, on the N97, as you have on the G1 and the iPhone. This very much improves the browser experience, something that I've criticised on the 5800. You can also see there's a double tap to zoom in and out, again something which makes it much easier to get around web pages. Given neither of these elements were fully demonstrated at Nokia World, it's a great example of how software improvements during the course of a development of a device are becoming increasingly important and something we may see more of before the N97 is released in June.